<laughs> right, very good morning. Um, this week, as we're recording, we all have a vast amount of snow outside our windows um, and are pretty much blocked in, I think. I don't know if that's still the case uh, when we uh, broadcast on Sunday, but uh, I hope you're all staying warm and cosy inside. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about what's going on in each of the congregations just now. So, Neil, would you like to tell us what's going on in Contour and maybe a little bit about the, the wider area group as well? Thank you very much, Fiona, and hello, everybody. Good to be with you again. Um, things at Kintour are pretty much just ticking along with our normal uh, activities, so, so no, no great changes. But if you're interested in what we're up to, do check out our website. Uh, it is Messy Church Week coming up soon, next weekend, so, uh, so there'll be Messy Packs going out this week, too. Um, as far as the area grouping is concerned, uh, we've enjoyed these services that we've had that we've been sharing since what was it, October last year or sometime um, August October uh, sometime last year uh, they're really good that we've been able to share these services and uh, we're ready to take the next step together and what's going to happen is we'll have a, a short meeting uh, towards the end of this month I think it's the 24th um, of February where representatives from our four congregation groupings uh, we'll, we'll gather together to have a, a chat about the next steps that we can take on our journey with one another. So uh, look out for that um, and uh, we, we look forward to, to seeing what the next steps will be. Thank you, Neil. Sheila, what's going on in Echter Midmar? Are you all snowy and uh, snowed in just now? Well, I think just about, we have some spectacular icicles as well that seem to be getting longer by the day too. But yes, it's it's great to be part of, of worship today and it's great to be with you. Things here are ticking along as well. And as Neil said with Contour, if you want to find out a little bit about what's happening or what's upcoming um, in Echton Midmar, then please check out the, the church website. But we're also looking forward very much actually to being part of the, the group wide conversation and we started this conversation actually about a year ago now which seems hard to believe when we, we all got together um, at Kemi and I think it probably was about last February time and we had a great conversation that night and of course things changed over the year with, with Covid so Picking up the threads of that conversation and actually from a different basis because we've now got to know one another and we're working together uh, and then trying to discern the best way forward and where we go from here together. I think it's actually quite it's quite exciting and I know from an Echton Midmar perspective we're really looking forward to being part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. So thanks Fiona. That's great Sheila, thank you. And Joshua? How about, how are things with you? Uh, well, like yourself, Fiona, we are snowed in here in Kemne considerably, but thankfully our grocery delivery driver still managed to deliver our groceries last night. So huge kudos to all those working so hard in the weather right now. Uh, the things to share about Kemne, uh, as I mentioned this, I think last time, we're starting, uh, we've started an evening service of worship online at 7 p.m. on Sunday evenings. They'll be available on Facebook and YouTube. And along with this joint service, which we're very much enjoying being a part of, we are continuing with our Kemne Kids service at nine o'clock. So if you wanna hear all my bad jokes and terrible impressions, that's where to go and find those. But like yourselves, uh, also looking forward to the meeting on the 24th of February to continue to, to discern. And Sheila, as you mentioned, we've had a chance to all get to know each other better over the last year. And thank you all for putting up with me anyways. So that's very much appreciated. But we are excited here in Kenya for what God is going to be doing in our midst next. And we want to lean into what the Lord's will is for us and for our grouping and for Presbytery as well. It's great. Well, thank you very much, Joshua. So let us join together as we worship God. We gather today in the transformative light of God's presence. We gather willing to be touched by God's majesty and mystery and splendor. From mountaintop to the lowest depths, may God's name be praised. Together, let us worship God. Let us pray. Loving God, you welcome us to this time of worship. And you invite us into the mystery of your presence where the earthly touches the heavenly. 
Remind us as we look around that we're standing on holy ground and that into this very moment and into this very place you come to us in the spectacular and in the ordinary, in the expected and in the surprising. On this Transfiguration Sunday, we're reminded again of the story of Jesus surrounded by light high on the mountain. Wherever we find ourselves today and in the days to come, may your light flood into the darkest corners of our lives and souls, bringing hope and inspiration and promise. We're reminded of Moses and Elijah, prophets from another place and time, who lived and proclaimed your word. May your eternal truth reach out to us across the years and across the things that would divide us, challenging our thinking, shaping our discipleship, and helping us to recognize the prophets in our own place and time. We're reminded of the cloud that covered the mountain. Even in those moments when we can't see you clearly, help us still to put our trust in you. We're reminded of the disciples and their need to be doing something, their need to try and capture the moment the comfort they took in retreating into busyness. May our believing and living be peppered with moments of less doing and more being. And of course, we're reminded of Jesus and the disciples returning from the mountain to the ordinariness of day-to-day -day life. May we continue to spot sacredness in the ordinary and the miraculous in the mundane. Loving and eternal God, wherever we are and whoever we are, we offer our lives to you, the good and the not so good, the broken, the mended, the whole. And we invite you to continue transforming us each according to our need. May we know God's richest blessing this day as we offer this and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Good morning. Our first reading from Scripture comes to us from the Old Testament, from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, and what shall I do for you before I am taken from you? And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Our second reading comes to us from the New Testament, from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9 verses 2 through 9, the Transfiguration. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is God's word to us this morning, and to the Lord be the praise and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Life's a little bit on the boring side just now, isn't it? I think the most exciting thing that we get to do is walk to the shop to pick up the milk. And at that point, we hope and we pray that we maybe meet somebody we can have a five minute chat with. Even if that chat is about the pandemic or immunisations or the weather? Well, the weather's a slightly more exciting topic at the moment anyway, with all this snow. But it's boring. It's predictable. It's the same faces, same places. 
and really no idea when we're going to get to travel again. Now there are people who like lim routine and limited social contact and for them this could be a bit of a dream come true. But don't be confused, the huggers are definitely struggling. Routines can be very comforting, they can be very predictable. It is good to know what's going to happen next, it makes us feel safe. Sometimes though, when things become routine, we stop thinking about why we do things and we just do them. Some traditions are passed down to us and we give very little thought as to why we do them. It's just the way it's I beam. I think that the classic example of this that I know is the lady who always removed the legs from her chicken before putting it in the oven. And when her daughter challenged her and asked her why she did it this way, she responded with, but that was the way my mother taught me to do it. And I went back to speak to her mother, who also said that that was the way her mother had always done it. So they went to have a wee chat with Granny and asked her why she removed the legs from the chicken before putting it into the oven. And she told them that when she was first married, she had a very small oven and the whole chicken wouldn't fit. So she took the legs off and cooked them separately. This was a tradition which had originally started for a very practical reason. But by the time it reached the third generation, it had become a case of what we did, with really no thought as to why we did it. And it really wasn't necessary. So what does this have to do with our readings today on Transfiguration Sunday? When Jesus was revealed to his closest disciples to who he really was. Well... Today I want to think about transformation and reformation and what does it mean to be transformed? When we transform and reform, do we include God in our plans? Do we ask him what his plans are? Or maybe we wait till we hit a snag in the road and then think, well, maybe now's the moment to pray about it. Alongside this, we can also think about why we do what we do. What needs to stay the same? But what needs to be changed? Now last week, Sheila spoke to us about Jesus going off on his own to pray. He sought out the quiet places and spoke to his Heavenly Father about what had happened. And we can assume from his decision to head out to the countryside to preach and to heal afterwards that he also received direction as to what to do next. So many times in Jesus' life, we find situations where he went off to a quiet place to pray. And then he came to a major decision. Whether in Galilee or the Garden of Gethsemane. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus again went off to a quiet place. But he took some of his disciples with him. Just a few verses earlier, Peter had declared that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. So maybe it was time to reveal to him what that truly meant. Was this transfiguration what happened every time Jesus met with his father? We cannot know, because normally he was alone, and he didn't share much of his private conversations with God. But as you would expect, the disciples with him were dumbfounded by this experience. Peter, however, responds in true Peter fashion. When unsure of what to say, instead of saying nothing, he starts suggesting erecting tents or shelters. He wants to trap the experience in the present. And on this occasion, his rebuke does not come from Jesus, but from God. In a reflection of Jesus' baptism on the Jordan, there's a voice from heaven acknowledging Jesus as his son to the world, but with an added instruction. Listen to what he says. Now is not the time for talking, Peter. Now is a time to listen. Jesus repeats that instruction when he tells his disciples to keep this experience to themselves. It's not yet the time to tell people. That time will come. But for now, just hold on to the experience and learn from it. This theme of secrecy, of holding on to things until the right time, can also be found in our Old Testament reading. 
Whenever Elisha is told that Elijah will be taken from him, he instructs the people not to tell anyone. Like Peter, Elisha does not want to let Elijah go. Peter had wanted to erect tents to hold on to a mountaintop experience. But for Elisha, he just keeps following Elijah around. Elijah tells him not to come, but Elisha wants to use every free moment to spend time with his friend, teacher, surrogate father. He's scared to lose him, but he also wants to follow in his footsteps. When asked by Elijah what he wants, he asks for the inheritance of a firstborn son, the double share of the property. The property which Elijah has, however, is not material. But the spiritual gift of prophecy, Elisha wants to carry on the prophetic mission of Elijah. And that is granted to him once Elijah has been swept up to heaven in a whirlwind. We need to remember that although Elisha was blessed to follow in Elijah's footsteps, his journey was very different from Elijah's. His experiences were different and his personality was different. He took the gift of prophecy and used it in a way which was fitting for his personality and his circumstances. He didn't try to become Elijah. He followed God in the way in which he was created to do. Same tradition, but he utilised to fit the situation in which he found himself. The experiences described in both of these passages were life-changing for the participants. But they weren't public events. They were private. They were in quiet and spiritual places, on a mountaintop, on a plain. These are the locations which Celtic Christians may have referred to as thin places. The spots where the temporal and spiritual, where heaven and earth seem to almost touch. A place where we can experience the living presence of God, often in stillness, whilst contemplating God's glory. You may by now be wondering what my point is, and it's quite simple. Within the context of the National Church of Scotland, and within our local presbytery and the churches, we are facing a period of upheaval and change. We have fewer resources in the form of money, ministers and members. And like it or not, the current church model is no longer working. We are part of the reformed tradition, but the verb reform does not need only to be considered in the past tense. It should be considered as an ongoing process, not reformed, but reforming to meet the needs of the world in which we live. When we are faced with big life experiences, how do we respond? Do we copy Alicia and follow the old ways around, desperately trying to cling on to what has gone before, not wanting to hear that change is inevitable? Or are we like Peter, saying the first thing which comes into our heads and wanting to run with that, without stopping to consider whether it is the right thing, or even in God's plan. Are we like the lady cooking her chicken without the legs, blindly following an outdated tradition, without asking why we do things the way we do? The draft presbytery plan has been circulated, and I'm sure that those who have seen it are beginning to digest its implications. As Neil discussed during our blether this morning, there is an opportunity for the congregations within this area grouping to start to work together and talk together with a conversation between the congregations at the end of February. And if you have anything which you would like to contribute to that conversation, then I'm sure that your minister would be happy to hear from you. Unfortunately, in the context of a Zoom call, there isn't space for everyone to attend. So it will just be a couple of people selected from each congregation able to participate on this occasion. But whether you're asked to be part of this conversation or another one, or maybe just wish to add your comments in, 
I challenge you to think about how you're responding to this new situation. Change is inevitable. We can no longer maintain the status quo at either a national or a local level. At the beginning of this, we have the opportunity to discern where it is that God wants us to go, what path it is that he wants us to take. We can be brave, we can be adventurous, we can choose to be excited and be part of that process. We can be the generation of evangelists and disciples which God has called us to be. But in order to do that, we have to stop. We have to listen. And we have to discern what it is that God is saying to us. Before you send your minister an email, pray and listen for an answer. Before you start the Zoom call, if you're part of that, pray and wait for the answer. When we're talking about traditions changing, stop and pray and think and listen about why it is we do the things the way that we do them. If we're simply breaking off legs because our grandmother's oven wasn't big enough, then maybe it's time to change. I know change is difficult. And I know we are emotionally invested in a lot of what we do. But God's church, God's presence and the spreading of the gospel is what we're called to do. We need to be sensitive to one another. We need to listen to one another. But we also need to listen to the plan which God has for us and which he will, will reveal to us in his own time. So, I'm asking you this morning, where is your focus? Is it on the eternal? Do you see Christ transfigured in all his heavenly glory for his heavenly purpose? Or do you just want to build a tent to commemorate an experience? Have you reached out into the thin places where heaven and earth meet and sought out God's guidance for you? Or are you clinging to the worldly, afraid to let it go? When questions and changes occur, how do we respond? Do we panic and think of the logical explanations? Or do we stop and wait and ask God to help us discern the right path? We cannot know the future. We cannot know the eternal plan. But what we can do is trust that God knows it. And if we have the patience to listen for his voice, then he will change us and transform us and our lives to his eternal plan. Amen. Let us offer to God our prayers for the world. Let us pray. We are your house, O Lord, and the people of your promise. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory and God of grace, as you once revealed yourself to Moses face to face, so you have shown yourself to the world in the glory of your Son. Help us by your Spirit to know him by faith, to love him with all our heart, and to serve him with all our being. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory and God of grace, your disciples once saw Moses and Elijah point to Jesus as the fulfilment of the covenant of Sinai and all the prophet's words. Thank you that you have revealed yourself to us in your scriptures, that we may behold him whose suffering and death give life to the whole world. 
help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory and God of grace, you once came to a world lonely and afraid and showed to us the face of love and hope. Use us to reflect your glory and grace in our world and so represent you here to those who are alone, those who are troubled by fears and sins, and those whose hearts are grieved by their own faulty decisions or by the harm of others. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory and God of grace, your Son came to reveal your kingdom through words and works of mercy. Give to the sick your healing, and to the suffering your hope. May your saving will and the glory of your steadfast love support all who call upon you in the day of trouble. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory and God of grace, you once spoke through a cloud to your disciples of old, that they might see Jesus by faith even when earthly eyes cannot see. Grant to us this bold and courageous faith, that we may see Jesus trust in him for our salvation and be ready to receive him when he comes again in clouds of glory. And so as he taught his disciples, we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
As we enter into our new week, we ask that your power transforms us to be more like you in all that we think, all that we say and all that we do. May the peace of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>